Hey, buenos dias. Mi nombre es Dan, and this is my shop. Wow, it's been a while since I've been out here, and I, I really miss being out here. I've had so many projects going on. This table just yesterday was piled this high with tools and leftover materials from all the different things that we're doing uh, around the house and with the RV and the motorcycles and everything. It's just been a really busy summer as far as maintaining things and, and uh, building things differently and all that kind of stuff. So I haven't been able to get working on the airplane for some time now, but um, I've decided it's time to get back at it because here we are going into the fall and the weather here is still, it's still like in the 90s, so it's, it's pretty hot. And like today, I'm trying to kind of hurry and get this done because this garage is gonna become very hot uh, not too long from now. Um, even my co-star, you know, I've had a lot of people uh, commenting about how they, they liked uh, uh, Trixie being hanging around at the table and stuff like that. And she's a great cat and everything, but she's gone today. I think she's outside somewhere laying under a tree in the shade and just kind of like uh, being a lazy cat. But uh, what I wanted to do was get back and start working on the plane again. Uh, if you're new here, we're in the middle of building, scratch building a model airplane. This is gonna be a Ryan's Rebel, which is a giant scale, which means we're gonna be using a gasoline engine to power it. And uh, if, if you're interested in model airplanes, please hit that subscribe button down below. We would love to have you. And I'd love to, uh, you know, it's like I was saying, even though I haven't been able to be in the shop, the comments that you've been sending me and the, and the questions and so forth, thank you so much for that. It just, it makes it so that you know, I, I'm frustrated that I can't be back in the shop and, and uh, cutting the videos and stuff like that as often as I want to, but I sure like to be able to communicate with you and help you as best I can. You've had lots of questions on where to get the plans and the parts and those, those little pins um, that I was sticking the plane together with uh, when I was building the wing and stuff like that. A lot of questions about those things. Thanks for the questions. Keep them coming. I love talking to you. So getting back on the plane um let me see here where do we leave off we were working on that last the fuselage and now we're going to be start working on the tail feathers uh, the tail feathers i pretty much just took them right off the plans uh, after i laid them out i just took them and didn't bother to do any of the finish work on them and the reason why is because when i'm doing a plane in a modular sense so say we built the wing first and then we built the tail feathers and then we worked on the fuselage last, uh, three different components. What happens is, is you tend to build something and then you just kind of have to set it aside somewhere. Well, when you have a shop like mine, which is also a garage, which has also got other projects going on, you tend to have a possibility of what we call ranger, hanger rash, ranger rash, hanger rash, which means that just stuff sitting around gets kind of bashed or dented or something gets set on top of it those kind of things. So what I like to do with the tail surfaces, since there's a lot of fine finish work that needs to be done on them, it's like all of the uh, edges need to be rounded to a point. Um, and then the inside uh, edges for the flipping of the hinge, you need to have a 45 degree. You know, there's just a lot of different uh, special sanding that's gonna be done to these parts. And I don't like getting them all prettied up and then giving them a chance of being dented up somewhere down the road, so I gotta fill it with putty or something like that. So what I tend to do is just leave them in a the raw form. If this were to get dented or something right now, chances are it would be in a place that I would be sanding and reforming anyway. So that's why I always kind of put it off until I'm just about ready to mount them, and we're just about there now. So today I'm gonna to show you uh, some of the sanding that we need to do to this. I'm gonna show you a little trick using <laughs> Power tools, oh, I just love power tools, they're so great. I'm gonna use a, a special power tool I'll show you here in a few minutes. But uh, first we gotta get these things kind of uh, drawn up and lined out where we need uh, certain cuts to be made or certain sand shapes to be made. And uh, so we'll get on that first. So the first step we wanna do is establish where everything is gonna go as far as the different shapings that need to happen to these parts. So for instance, this is the start of the fin. So what we're gonna to need to do is basically round, uh, just simply sand until we get a nice round all the way around these corners um, on this part here. So this will be more air streamed. Uh, same thing about the top. You can just kind of 
round out to the top. Uh, that needs to be a little fine-tuned there, uh, sanded down. But, you know, these are the parts that just kind of need to be uh, all rounded off on here. Nothing needs to be done to the back of the uh, fin. I'm going to pick up the rudder, and I've already marked the center line on there. And so that's, I'll show you how we do that. What we're going to be doing is establishing a center line, and then on the, on the rudder, uh, hinge point, or the, excuse me, the, the rudder hinge line, there needs to be a slanted sanding or grind all the way down on both sides. I'll show you what that looks like. And let's see, the next thing that has to happen is, same thing, here's the elevator halves. Now the elevator halves need to be, uh, same thing, around the outside edges. You want to have those nice and rounded and streamlined. Uh, but then when we get to the hinge line, that's right here again, so we're going to need to establish another center point. And then, of course, the grind cuts on either side so that the elevator will be able to move up and down freely against the back of the stabilizer. So you'll have this thing so it can easily move up and down. And uh, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, so you can see right here on the plan, this is what this shape needs to look like. That's that center point right there is where the hinge mounts into the back of this part. This is the fin in this case, and this is the rudder. So we need to cut this angle into it so that uh, when the fin is, def or excuse me, the uh, rudder is deflected, it's able to use that as the pivot point. It, that space right there will go ahead and shift and move the rudder left or right as we need it. And you can see right here on this part of the drawing, here we have where the two points come together. So this is where the uh, hinge point, that point is right in the back of the fin right here. And then you can see this other line here, this represents that slant. So what we're gonna do, see this distance right here, from this point here, I'm gonna to have to get something that's got more of a point to it. I'm gonna use this rivet to point. So from this point right here to this point is 3 16 of an inch. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and draw, since we know that this is the flat part of the rudder, this part here is right where that is gonna go. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and draw a line 3 16 of an inch back and draw the entire length of this piece here. And then we're going to sand so that we'll make this line meet the center line that we're going to establish, which has actually already been drawn on this piece here. But I'll show you how I draw the center lines on there. And we'll go ahead and establish those lines there. And then we can start sanding to get that cut nice, that grind nice and accurate. All right, so let's establish. Once again, I already did the center line on this one, so I'll show you how I did that in a minute. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and set this line here, which is right off of the plans. I'm going to measure out to uh, 3 16 There's one, two, and... Man, that's taking some good eyesight to get that. One, two... Three. One, two, and three. Okay, so right to there. And then let's get the second one. You know, I like doing sixteenths right off of here. When you got thirty seconds on there, it gets really uh, there's a lot to look at. So one, two, and three sixteenths. So we'll go ahead and drop that back there. Okay, so we got marks on there. What I'm gonna do is just take the straight edge and uh, set it so that we can go point A to point B with a nice straight line. Just like that. So this is the wood that's going to have to be removed and actually all we're trying to do from this point on, we'll go ahead and draw it to the side here so it's a better example. 
Okay, so if you look there, you can see the way I've... Whoa, where are we? Okay, you can see right where I put those marks on there, that's where the 3 sixteenths meets the center line right there. So, pretty much... Oh, I don't think I'm in focus there. There we go. It's in focus, but it's way at the top of the screen. Figure that out. Okay, so anyways, that's the part that's going to need to be removed right there. And uh, so it, it's... It's great because now we have a perfect angle. It, you don't have to accidentally worry, worry about um, accidentally cutting too far over or not enough or, or what have you. Everything is going to be uh, perfectly symmetrical by the time we get done with this cut. So we'll go ahead and flip that over, do it again on the other side. thing about this pan is you could just touch it to the wood and it will work two and three there we are again I'm gonna go ahead and connect these lines Okay, same thing. Uh, we have the two sets of lines again. We have the 3 16 line down to there. So all we're going to be doing is, is joining that point to that point on the sander with the angled sand. That's it. This is an elevator half, one of them. And uh, what I want to do is show you how I mark the center line on the part. This will be the line that represents uh, the point, the peak of the hinge line for where we'll be putting the hinges into the elevator. Uh, and so it'll also represent where those hinges will set into, but it's also going to be the peak line for when we make that grind. That's going to be where it goes to. So this is a little device that I have. I don't know where I got this. I think you can uh, get these probably anywhere online. This is used for centering hinge lines uh, for drawing hinge lines and also helping you to center them so if you look at there real close you see that there's like a little slot in there and I think what that's for is you're supposed to be able to put this on the wood press it together to get the absolute center of this beam and then you could take an exacto knife and stick it into that slot and then you've got the basis for where your uh, your hinge will go into the wood pretty cool huh but we're going to use it to draw center line see those little uh, holes there that are in that we're going to stick an ink pen in there so what I do is I do this take one of these guys here break them apart and got that now okay and then we'll take that and I've got this right on the center and I'll go ahead and run it up the hill squish this together so it makes it put that point right into the middle and then you just kind of trace down ah, kind of came up just like that and now we have a center line that runs down the center of that particular piece yeah pretty close okay so that'll be the center line that we're going to use to represent. Uh, once again, I'll draw the next line. And the elevators match the rudder. So it's exactly 3 16 of an inch down. We'll draw a line along there. And we'll go ahead and complete that on the sander. Say hello to my little friend. It's one of my favorite tools. It's a desktop or tabletop sander, belt sander. Uh, as opposed to the kind that you can use like to do a deck or something like that that's a belt on a handheld. This is actually mounted to the machine. Also has a disc sander on this side here. And uh, this can take wood down very quickly. And it's one of its uh, things. I mean, you could put a piece of plywood on there and watch it as it's sanding down a quarter of an inch or whatever, you know, if you're trying to take a lot of wood off. It takes it down very quickly. You use it for things for heavier duty stuff like uh, when you're working with blocks of maple or something where you need a shape to it. This will really help you get there faster than one of these will. So 
One of my favorite tools. It was fun to get it out. Now I'll go put it back in its little corner. I probably won't need it for some time again. But, you know, that's just, just part of the whole thing about building model airplanes. You need to have a lot of tools. You don't use them all the time, but it's always good to have them when you have them. All right, so I've got the sander all set here and I've got the piece here we're gonna go ahead and do. And what this will do is this will provide a nice straight grind down on the piece of wood. Uh, the belt's gonna turn this way. So it'll be pulling this way and uh, what we'll be doing is putting the uh, rudder right up against the steel wall down on this end here so that it won't go anywhere. And we can actually hold it very carefully and uh, try to get this grind done. Now, I've done this a few times, so I've gotten to be pretty good at using one of these, but sometimes it takes practice. If you buy one of these and you go to use it the first time, practice a little bit first, because this thing really it can screw up something very quickly. In fact, I'm probably taking a risk right now because it's been a while since I've used it. But uh, anyways, this is going to get really noisy, so uh, bear with me. So let me show you what this looks like at this point. Oh man, that is way, way too close. Ugh. All right, so you can see right there where we've pretty much ground down on this side here. And uh, it's fairly nice all the way down. Here's what I wanted to show you. See how I was talking about? We take and we connect these two points with a flat spot right in between. Now, this one is not exactly perfect because if it was perfect, I would need this deck here to be exactly the same length and this deck is a little bit shorter so it means I have to work on two different sides at a time and so that's why I was flipping it back and forth and getting a lot of that action in there but uh, it's it's pretty close the way it is it's not once again rocket science I need to find my uh... ah, here we go so what you do to kind of neaten it up, I mean, we're pretty close with what we did. And what I like to do is get it to almost done with the uh, power tools and then finish it with a somewhat gentle sanding down here. Let me back this out just a wee bit. Wee bit, yep. And With that, we now have a fairly, uh, fairly nice and clean hinge angle all the way up there. So let's go ahead and get the other side done. one's real easy to get carried away too quickly. You can see I actually 
eight down be below that line just slightly, just enough to remove some of the ink. So I'll go ahead and finish the lower part of this one by hand so I can keep from uh, taking that one part of the hinge line. If you, if you go too far down into it, what will happen is the center of the hinge line will move, and you don't want that. You want the center of the hinge line to be center line all the way up. You don't want to have one hinge down here and further up here, another hinge to be over on this side. So we'll just take a little bit of care to do this part by hand. And uh, boom, there we go. We now have the entire thing done. Uh, needs a little bit of work too. But I'll go ahead and continue to work on this. Um, and then the next part is going to be simply rounding. So this is the back side here. Um, we could do the same thing actually. not too bad. It gets a little bit out of wonk because of, uh, you know, being, being mechanized. It can take a lot of wood off real quick. By the way, while you're doing this kind of work where you're taking a lot of wood off of a, a surface with sanding, I recommend you wear a mask. I don't know where you could get one of those nowadays. I'm probably wearing one anyway right now, anyhow, all right? <coughs> yeah, this uh, sawdust is, I don't know that it's super bad for you, but if you've got like uh, COPD or anything like that, um, it could be a problem. To me, it, it just, you know, it's like right now it's really airborne around here. And uh, that's not good. It really just kind of tickles the back of my throat to the point where I'm coughing. And then for the next couple days, I'll be blowing my nose and that stuff will come out. So I do recommend a mask. I, I don't like having a mask on right now while I'm trying to do... Uh, a lot of uh, recording of audio on video and, and stuff like that. Not to mention, um, my wife came home for lunch and opened the garage door and it's now over 90 degrees in this garage. So anyways, that is pretty much it. Um, you can see that the edges of this, uh, this is the trailing edge of the rudder are now kind of uh, blunt. A couple of high points, I'll just keep working on those. This wood is so, soft and malleable that you can really very easily true things up in a hurry if you recognize that oh there's like a high point that runs off to one side here you can sand down directly on it and get rid of the high point and make it fairly round again i want to go over this with a finer this is a like a 60 grade it's either a 60 or an 80 but you can see on here where it's kind of leaving uh, the fibers of the wood are exposed. So if I get a finer one, like about a 120 or maybe a 200 or 220, um, it'll help remove that and make this surface nice and smooth. And it'll make it uh, ready to be uh, covered with the covering material a lot better. So anyways, that is pretty much it for using firepower to get your, ooh, boom, earthquake. Yeah, put a sound effect in there. Anyways, that's pretty much how uh, I go ahead and start shaping the various uh, shapes that need to be put onto the uh, 
the tail feathers. And this is the rudder. I'll go ahead and continue on to the elevator halves and then the uh, back of the, uh, I'll go ahead and shape around the stabilizer and the, sh the uh, elevator halves and then of course shape the fin. That'll be the next steps here, but um, didn't want to show you all that. It's be boring to watch all of that. So next time, um, I should have all those things done for you. And last time we uh, put the hatch on. Uh, this is now glued on. I put that on with five minute epoxy. And I gotta tell you, five minute epoxy, uh, when you use it in 85 degrees, like this shop right now is right around 90 degrees. Um, the five minute epoxy is actually like two minute epoxy. The set time on it just, when it's that warm, it just increases it very quickly. Uh, so you gotta be careful. In the, in the winter time, it's the other way around when it's like, 40 degrees in here, it will take probably half an hour before the five minute epoxy will cure to a, a necessary um, kind of grippingness. Grippingness, that's what you call that. It's not called tack time or anything, it's called grippingness. Thanks for coming by, and uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do so and hit the bell so that you'll be notified every time we come out with a new video. And uh, we hope to see you next time. Next time I hope to have the tail feathers all completely done and we'll be ready to start putting them onto the fuselage and uh, maybe start talking about hinge lines at that time. So see you next time. And your song is alive. It's filling all